Please be seated. In 1956, my parents moved us all from the Midwest to South Florida, where my father was to begin a business with a family friend. Now, this is before the interstate highway system was all completed, so we were mostly on county and some state roads. My father said that while traveling through a certain southern state, which will not be named, we crossed a river, a river that separated a dry county from a wet county. As you crossed the bridge on one side, there was a church, and when you crossed the bridge, there was a tavern. So as we came along, the church sign said, Jesus is coming soon, get ready. And you crossed the bridge and the tavern sign said, come in and have a beer while you wait. <laughs> it's important to know what you're gonna do in the meantime, right? <laughs> what we do in the meantime matters. The way we handle this meanwhile between the chapters and the changes of life can either help or hinder the outcome. And we call this in-between time a transition. Change is fast. Changes come all the time. Transition is slow. Transition is the adjustment we make to the many changes that we often face. And it consists both of the feelings we have and the adaptations that we make while we adjust to some new situation. The meantime is powerful. It can be sometimes anxious sometimes rewarding. We all have these times in our life, small and large, whether it's a, a new job or a move across town or across the country, the time between getting engaged and getting married, the time after graduation before the job or the military or further schooling. The time when a, a couple learns that they are expecting a child and waiting for the birth. In each of these, there are always lots of things to do. There are lots of lessons to be learned. There are things to remember. There are adjustments to make. Sometimes the time can be long, the lessons can be hard, and the list of tasks daunting. This is where St. John's is right now, in this time of transition. And a part of why I'm here today is to assure you that the waiting and the work is all worth it. But first, let's take a look at that gospel. We meet the people that were in last week's story who were fed in a time and a place where food was often scarce. This was, for them, a miraculous kind of feeding. And they wanted to make Jesus king. They knew their Bible stories. They knew that prophets and sages could come and do miracles. If that's the case, let's get him on our side. Let's make him our leader. So they follow him because of the food they received. 
And Jesus knows this, and he calls them out. He says, you didn't follow me because of my message. You followed me because you got food. And he says, focus on what matters. Focus on the source of that food, the source of everything, which is God. But they want more. They want a sign in order to be proof so that they can believe more confidently. He says, they say, what work can we do? He says, your work is to believe. Your work is the work of faith. So for those who are on your search committee, a lot of them know the story of this place. They know the values of this place. They know the legacy of this place. All of that comes together and helps us find this new dean that's out there. But it will be God's spirit that inspires and teaches us as we go along. And it will help prepare you for the change of leadership and also help your new dean to be equipped for what is next in the life of St. John's. But it's not only the search committee who has things to do in this transition. Your vestry, your chapter, has to be doing things, working on their transition. What do they want this new dean to help them get done? What kind of leader will they need as they move forward? So what the search committee team is doing now is assessing these needs and the goals of St. John's to seek out the best candidates in order to look for this new leader and this partner who will come to be in your midst. What you have already done, or at least many of you, is you have added your voice to the assessment in those focus groups. In the near future, you'll be able to volunteer to help as this transition continues. But all of you can pray. Pray for these leaders who are working for the benefit of this place and for all of you. What we mustn't do is forget who is the source of our wisdom and our hope and our strength as we move into St. John's future. Now, the only caution I have is that I have heard a few are starting to lean on the search committee a little bit. Got to hurry up. Got to get going. Got to make a decision. And I understand that concern. But it's the wrong focus at this time. And it will hamper your committee in doing their work if they're feeling this outside pressure. The bishop's former canon, Michelle Bolt, used to say, we move at the speed of trust. We move at the speed of trust, which among other things means that we will be collaborative, that we will be honest, and we will be prayerful. Haste is not our friend in this decision. Please support them. Trust them to do what you have tasked them to do. They are following the guidance of our bishop. They are following a process that's been used around the Episcopal Church for almost 15 years. Right now, we don't have much to tell you because we're still gathering information. We're working on the tools that we will continue to use as we go forward and start to interview. 
we are taking what the search committee already knows about St. John's, plus what you have shared in the focus groups, plus reviewing a past survey that was done here. We will create a web-based parish profile and a job description, and that will be available for anyone to see, but especially for the candidates. There are three stages in this search process, and actually I've left a few copies around of a little half sheet that's a summary. And there's some back there and over here in the library. Very quickly lays out what these three stages are, and we're in the first one. We're in the stage of assessment and building that job description. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we are waiting between God's promise and its fulfillment. What we do in the meantime can shape the future that we want so much. The American psychologist Abraham Maslow once said this, in any given moment, we have two options. We can step forward into growth or step back into safety. How will you step forward in these days ahead? Where will you go? What will be your direction? Pray that we may all meet these moments with our faith in the right place, with our eyes looking in the right direction, and our hearts ready to trust what God is already doing. Amen.